Good afternoon, and welcome to Likeable Science here on Think Talk Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, and Likeable Science it is today. Uh, we're going to talk about a new uh, device, an invention, uh, and our guest to help us discuss this is, is Howard Kaplan. He's joining us from Florida. Uh, welcome, Howard. Thank you very much for having me, Ethan. Hey. Good, good to see you. Howard is a biomedical engineering PhD candidate at the University of South Florida. And he's also the manager of the Advanced Visualization Center. So uh, that sounds like a pretty spiffy title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a very unique title. So can you tell us a little bit about the, the center and, and what you do there? Sure. Uh, the center is uh, a campus-wide resource for uh, the University of South Florida where students, faculty, and researchers can uh, come and explore uh, how they can integrate advanced technologies into their research and academics. So we offer lots of different technologies and we help students and faculty not only use them, but develop for them. So some examples might be uh, using virtual reality or augmented reality or even 3D printing uh, within their uh, academics. And it spans all different disciplines from arts and sciences to mathematics and even business. Yeah, I, I can see that visualization, visualization can have a lot of applications uh, in different, different disciplines. I know they use some here at the University of Hawaii in, in a, a studying groundwater reservoir, reservoir so. Yeah. Uh, but this particular pro, uh, product that we're talking about are your tactile maps. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about how this came into being. Sure. Um, well, uh, myself in my, in my family, I have uh, relatives, both young and old, um, that have some uh, visual impairments um, uh, where they're low vision or they're completely blind. And um, not only that, but even um, seeing some of the, the students that we have on campus, uh, some amazing individuals that uh, go through academics and have a, have a great academic career, um, have, have some trouble or at least have um, uh, some challenges when it comes to, to navigation. And so I thought that uh, maybe there would be a better way to introduce um, some kind of uh, device using 3D printing that would enable them to have uh, a greater sense of, you know, their their area and uh, the environment uh, around campus, especially when it comes to navigating interior spaces. So that's really uh, how the, the tactile maps came about. Yeah, in retrospect, it seems like such an obvious idea. Uh, make use of the keen sense of touch that many blind people develop and not have them try to rely on big signs or whatever they're not going to read. Yeah, well, most most of the things that are available um, to, to blind and low vision are, are text based. You know, they, they read using Braille or raised text um, or they get a lot of um, audio information. But that information is, is kind of static or, or stale. It's just giving, given to them in that one form and that one way. They really um, don't have a device where they can explore on their own and build their own uh, understanding and their own relationships. So um, it, it seemed like a no brainer to try and use 3D printing for it, but the difficult aspect of it was to create um, symbols and uh, textures that would allow them not only to, to feel everything correctly, but to build understanding of what those textures and symbols actually meant. Right, but the advantage right away you can see is that, that your maps are not a linear process like, like reading text, that they right. give a, a, a two-dimensional at least uh, sense of, of, the, of the place. But yeah, you exactly. Had to, they you had to develop the um, coding, as it were, right? To, to tell them what made doorways, stairs, elevators, emergency exits. Yeah, exactly. We had to uh, come up with um, methods that would allow them to understand that um, what they were touching had meaning 
um, according to the objects um, and physical navigation of the space. And that's really when um, user testing uh, was very helpful. Um, you know, it's easy for me as a sighted person to say, oh, this represents a door or this represents stairs, but it's a, a totally different thing when you're working with these individuals and you actually um, kind of get a perspective of how they're um, kind of mentally interpreting the world around them through touch. Right. And you were saying that there's no real coding that's been developed for this. There's no standardized set of symbols to represent the, these things. So you had to develop all of this de novo in conjunction with the, the people who are using them. Yeah, there's, there's no real set standard of this represents this and that represents that. It's kind of um, ad hoc because um, there, there's really no easy method for producing um, these tactile visuals um, or these tactile um, instruments. Um, typically, uh, you, you would have to um, kind of send away what you want to create or, you know, if you want an image to be embossed or uh, raised or anything like that, that has to be sent away and then it has to be made. And, and typically it's just taking uh, an image that a visual person sees and just raising that up, um, so using its, its color. So it really didn't have much meaning um, for um, this user population. Right. So let's maybe show that first picture that really shows what these maps look like. So can you tell us sort of what, 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 what this is? Yeah, so in this image, I have um, one of the uh, study participants um, who's been blind since birth. Um, they use a, a cane as their mobility device. Um, and right now um, they're testing uh, two maps and they're kind of comparing uh, different uh, tactile features of each maps uh, and letting me know uh, which ones they prefer and, and uh, kind of how they're navigating about. And uh, one of the um, kind of main things that we wanted to do, especially with university maps, was introduce um, the evacuation routes in the map. So in case of an emergency, um, these are the, the ways that you can exit the room safely uh, sure. within there. Because uh, a lot of the times, um, they're they're given a, a, a guided tour and in that guided tour they're only shown one way in and out of the classroom um, and and not really exploring uh, multiple options and definitely right. not their emergency routes yeah and your maps would show them that they may have a standard entry but there are other exits yeah exactly yeah, yeah. excellent excellent so, it, it, yeah, so this was a very important. iterative process then yeah, it was an extremely iterative process, and that's what um, 3D printing allows us to do very quickly. Um, you know, you can, you can produce a lot of maps with 3D printing with different textures and different uh, symbols and different heights and sizes uh, and combinations of symbols, test them with the users, get feedback, um, and by the next day, you could uh, produce another map that's a physical map that they could test out again. So. This was a very iterative process where we were testing maps, we were testing various uh, symbols and things like that all the time. Right, because there's a bunch of different uh, aspects, as you were saying, how high, how low, yeah. how small, yeah. uh, all these things will influence usability. Yeah, exactly. We have to make sure that, um, you know, the spacing is correct, that you know, we don't try to jam too many symbols into one area because that, that can negatively impact uh, the readability of the map. And then if you have too much space, then uh, it's not readable either. So there's, we're looking for that optimal um, amount of information, um, space, um, and kind of comprehension within the entire map. Right, because these maps then aren't exactly a perfect physical rep representation of the space, right? Right, they're not a, a physical rep representation. They're not a measurement per measurement, um, a scale, uh, you know, representation of the physical space. Um, it's more of an abstract to somebody who's cited representation of the space. 
that somebody who is uh, blind and uh, low vision, uh, for them, um, so far, the maps have seemed to uh, uh, work out in terms of them reading and actually using the maps and understanding. Right. So, so we have a third, a third picture here. Yep. Yeah, so this is another individual we tested with um, many different age groups uh, from, I would say, the teens all the way up to uh, about 65, 70 years old uh, because we wanted to get many different types of users, um, users that uh, may have some experience with tactile graphics or tactile maps, um, some that have not uh, had any experience at all, um, some people that uh, knew the facility that they were navigating to some extent, um, and others that had uh, no idea about the facilities that they were in. And also different um, fingertip sensitivities and different sizes, of course, um, and, and different levels of uh, kind of uh, tactile literacy, which is very important. Yeah, that's, that's all th those key aspects that you've worked out now. That, that's really great. Yep. Uh, so yeah. we're getting these into use now? Yeah, we're starting to uh, get them into use um, in uh, office spaces where there are employees that are, are low vision uh, or blind individuals who, who work for various companies. Um, and they uh, have to navigate to the cafeteria or the elevator, um, and they have to go through buildings that are multi-levels um, and uh, have to find other coworkers within that space. So we've developed uh, maps for uh, companies, uh, maps for training facilities uh, where uh, blind individuals are, are kind of learning how to uh, use a cane or uh, learning how to get back into the workplace. Um, and definitely within the uh, Introduce uh, these maps to uh, some of the faculty and students that uh, may need to use a classroom or a building. Excellent. This is yeah. this is really good, and this shows how you're applying new science, new technology into a real practical, daily, impactful uh, situation. Yeah, exactly. And I and I think you know there's. There's obviously room room to grow and room to build, and that's what we hope to do. Um, and we hope to share this with the rest of the community uh, and continue uh, working to make these resources available to everybody. Right. And the cost of 3D printing is dropping all the time, right? Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, it, the technology is getting uh, cheaper and cheaper. Um, it's getting kind of more efficient. Um, uh, where uh, that's biocompatible and bio-friendly uh, for fairly inexpensive. Um, I think, you know, the, the challenge with it is that even if you have a 3D printer, uh, you still have to understand the encoding system and how to build the maps uh, using a, a 3D software, a CAD software. Huh. Um, that's kind of where the next phase of our research Excellent. And maybe we'll dig into that in the next half. But right now, we're going to have to take a short break. We'll be back. Howard Kaplan will join us again in the next half. And I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Likeable Science. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m., on Friday afternoons, and then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up, and please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, and they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff, but I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're gonna talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're gonna definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha.
And you're back here on Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks for coming back and joining us for the second half of this uh, wonderful episode on tactile maps. Uh, we have Howard Kaplan <coughs> down in Florida, who's with us remotely here. And Howard has developed these uh, amazing 3D printed maps to enable blind or low-sighted people to get a, a tactile sense of rooms, spaces, buildings, uh, find all the different ways in and out of a, a, a room, the different exits, so they have a better sense of the different options rather than just being shown a single route. Um, and uh, it's apparently allowing them to really navigate much more independently now. Uh, welcome back, Howard. Thank you very much. So uh, you were just saying before the break a little bit that, that you are beginning to get these out into, into various workplaces and, and around your, your campus more. Uh, so can you, uh, I mean, what kind of reports are you getting back from the people about, about their use? Yeah, um, well, you know, we've been conducting this study for um, about four years now. And um, when we started, we, we were kind of definitely on the wrong track, but through the iterative process, we've gotten uh, great feedback. And uh, I think now, currently, uh, you know, we're starting to uh, see these uh, maps utilized uh, in various places here in the Tampa area, uh, out in the community and at the university. Um, and we've, we've gotten great response, and we've seen a lot of interest from other people. So uh, part of the next phase that we want to do is try to uh, build a way for others to uh, be able to create these maps themselves. Right, because you have obviously some coding to uh, generate that 3D product, right, and make certain ridges of certain heights and widths and corners and symbology. And you have to, if you want to share that, you're going to have to sort of organize that and put it out in some sort of a manual, right, that people can look at and learn to learn right. to manipulate. Definitely, uh, yeah, definitely we want to share um, the kind of guidelines and uh, different measurements and uh, all of the, the kind of data we have. So that's kind of the first phase of this. Um, but uh, also we're working on um, uh, kind of building an application that will allow um, non-technical individuals to uh, develop these maps on their own computer. Uh, because right now, for me, it's a, it's a very manual process of designing and, and fixing and having to, to do all the measurements and everything like that. Um, so somebody who's not very technical, it would be very difficult to do this kind of work um, and also understand those guidelines at the same time. So we're working on uh, building an application that will allow uh, an individual to use a 2D image uh, or a drawing or a blueprint um, and recreate uh, uh, the maps uh, for um, 3D printing or uh, at least to build a 3D model that can be produced uh, in different methods but have the same uh, guidelines and parameters that uh, the tactile maps uh, we create have. Oh, it sounds very challenging because you're, you're dealing with a lot of different, uh, different features there, right, that they have to take into account. So that must be... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, but you're a whole other. That's a whole other aspect where we start dealing with you know user testing for the application itself, so that we can test whether or not it's easy to use for the non-technical users. So it's a it's a whole different study, but uh, it's very important in allowing um, uh, these maps to uh, have a broader and, and wider um, accessibility range. Right, because you can only make so many of them, right? Uh, how, how many, what's your time to make to generate one of these maps? Uh, well, now I can make them fairly uh, quickly because I, you know, I have the symbol set and things like that. So, um, you know, it can take me an hour or two depending on uh, the parameters of the, of the interior space um, to build them. And then, of course, we've got to print them, and printing can take a long time depending on the, the size of the map. Uh, but yeah, I can't make these maps for everybody. Right. Um, and instead of just kind of, you know, like I said, we could throw out the guidelines for, you know, here's what symbols and here's the measurements and everything like that. Uh, but uh, once you have those, you still need to have the, the other skills as well. Um, so it, it's kind of very important that if we want these to kind of continue, we offer a, a more uh, user-friendly and efficient way to create the maps. Yes, and that's, you know, that's going to be a very interesting sort of phase two of, of your project because 
in theory, then they could really go, they could go national or even international, and, and that would be a, a great thing. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a huge uh, potential user audience there. Sure. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, but to sort of getting to that point where they, where they can be easily enough produced by enough people in enough places is, uh, yeah. has a huge set of challenges behind it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we're building we're, we're building out the uh, computer application um, so that we can have user testing um, so that we can begin to see what the features need to be and uh, all that kind of stuff. So I think we're pretty close to having our, our first phase of user testing on that. Um, and we've had uh, results back um, uh, from generating the models and from 3D printing um, that have been very good. Um, so now it's just a matter of, uh, again, the user testing of that to, to make sure that we're putting out an application that um, is user-friendly. Excellent. And in, in your notes here, uh, you sent me, you refer to something called a, a, a uh, what, is, what do you say here, a uh, mobile-based audio haptic map. Uh, that yes. that sound, sounded very impressive, but I, but I couldn't quite envision what, what you meant. Yeah, so a... Um, a haptic um, device would be uh, a device that gives the user feedback um, tactually. So, uh, you know, if you're using your mobile phone, you'll get vibration back, uh, and that is haptic feedback. You know, you can feel your phone uh, physically, uh, but, you know, just like, you, just like anyone can feel the maps. Mm -hmm. But getting uh, force feedback um, through vibration or other types of means um, is the haptic aspect of that. And then, of course, the audio aspect of, of that would be hearing um, some kind of information about what you're uh, touching or what you're, you're feeling on the haptic device. So part of what we're doing with this application that we're building is we realize that not everybody has 3D printers or a way to manufacture the map. Um, so an alternative might be to uh, now that we have the information in the application uh, of the area you want to create, is to convert that also to a haptic map that would give you uh, give the user feedback uh, when they run their fingers across it, um, and when they hit certain areas, uh, they would get audio cues as to what that area was on the map. Oh. Um, so this is something that we're also developing out there because uh, we know that there are. Um, blind and low vision users that have uh, tablets and, and mobile phone devices as well. Right, and that should make sense with, uh, yeah, sort of scan the space with your, with your phone or, or your tablet and, and have it then tell you about the various features and yes, uh, alert yep. you if you're walking too close to a wall or coming up on a chair or something, right? Yeah, yeah, and you can get either an audio alert or a vibration alert that tells you, you know, this, you know, you need to stay on this uh, travel uh, destination, or you're moving too far left, too far right, um, or you're coming up to a doorway or something like that um, would be very important. Right, and, and it seems like our uh, these other technologies, both the, uh, the the cameras, the sort of object recognition technologies that are getting better and better all the time, a little bit of the AI that's coming out will be of great help in this. Then, right? Sure, yeah, I mean, it, um, it has a, a long way to go, um, but yeah, it'll definitely be a great help in understanding, um, uh, especially how to um, uh, kind of talk to that user um, using various methods. Again, if, if the talking is actual audio or if it's haptic feedback, um, how can we use the mobile device's features um, to signal those users? Um, and, and again, it's the same type of thing. We need to figure out what those uh, haptic or audio signals are that are uh, optimal for the user. Right, you'll have to again have a, a develop a whole symbology, a whole sort of alphabet or a, a dictionary of, of buzzes, uh, vibration codes or whatever, right, that, 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 that everyone sort of understands. And part of that is to make all that intuitive too, right? Yeah, yeah, you have to make it intuitive and you, you, um, kind of so that it's relatable. Um, I mean, I, I remember when I had one participant, uh, especially um, testing the maps, um, you know, her, her feedback uh, for the evacuation routes uh, that have a, a kind of a bumpy texture was, oh, these are, these are very bumpy, uh, but when I, when I run my finger across them, uh, they kind of alert me uh, because I can feel them. Uh, I can feel how kind of 
uh, gritty they are, um, and that reminds me of an emergency. And that's kind of what we're looking for. We're looking for that relationship to say, you know, yes, even though this uh, symbol uh, might be um, hard to use in terms of always having to run your finger across it, uh, in this case, we want that because it signals that this is the emergency route. Yeah. So this is the route that you should take. Um, so we're, we're constantly looking for that type of feedback uh, from many users mm. uh, before we actually choose which um, kind of uh, encoding we use in the map. Excellent. Hey, well, this is great, Howard. I, I so much appreciate your coming on the show here and telling us about this in incredible new uh, technical or technology that, that you've developed. And uh, I look forward to hearing about, about it more. Uh, thank you so much. And, uh, thank you for having me. Yes, indeed. And I hope you will come back and uh, see us here next week on Likeable Science here on ThinkTech Hawaii. Until then.